Welcome to video 10 on Train Controller 10 Gold. In this episode we'll have a closer look at schedule types and schedule successors to see how we can have trains run indefinitely. In the previous video we created this schedule called Intercity Clockwise and a train starts at station Twinwoods then it drives to Bedford where it makes a scheduled stop of a couple of seconds and then it drives back to Twinwoods. Uh, when we start this schedule uh, we found out that it of course uh, gets up here in the schedule list but we found out that once the train has arrived at the destination block the schedule was took out of this list and well the train stopped and that was it. If we want this train uh, or both of these trains to run indefinitely on this schedule, uh, yeah, what do we need to do to accomplish that? That's the question. Let's go to edit mode and right click the schedule, go to properties and then the general tab. In this general tab we have a schedule type and there's a drop down list. We could make this uh, not a normal schedule, we could make this a cycle schedule. And the fun of a cycle schedule is uh, that we can give it a repeat count, which is by default set to 1. But suppose I want these two trains to run this schedule 6 times, I could enter 6 over here. And uh, yeah, that will make the counter count down every time this schedule is finished. What if I would like to make it run indefinitely? I can enter the number 0 over here and that means it will never stop running. The trains will always restart this own, their own schedule, the cycle schedule. There's only one uh, condition that has to be met for a schedule to be able to become a cycle schedule and that is that the begin point and the end point must be in the same block. And with this schedule, that is the case. So we can safely make this cycle with a repeat count of zero and the trains will keep running. That is one way to do it. The other way to accomplish this is to keep the schedule on type normal, which it is by default, and then give it a successor. We see over here a successor top, let's click it. And now we can in this uh, right uh, window add the successor that we want from this list. Well, because we want to restart the same intercity clockwise schedule, let's click that add it and now what we have accomplished is when the train has finished its schedule it will look if there is a successor schedule and in this case there is it's the same intercity clockwise schedule but that doesn't matter at all it will simply start that schedule as the successor what we can do here below is to tell it that we want to keep the same train not change trains, keep the same train on this new schedule. And that's good. Oh, another uh, tick mark that we can set, should we request this new schedule already in the uh, previous last block? Well, not because we have a waiting time here, so there's more than enough time to figure out uh, without a hiccup, so to speak, uh, that this schedule should start next. This is it, this is what we need. This was a simple example, uh, just a cycle uh, uh, with one successor. But what if uh, we would like to make, uh, let's say, cargo trains run all over the place? Well, let's make an example for that and see how to accomplish that. Let's first assume that we want a cargo train to run from Wellingboro to Bletchley and then uh, vice versa from Bletchley back to Wellingboro and we yeah, allow it to drive backwards on this track. That is a must, otherwise we have to change a locomotive somewhere over here. Uh, so let's do this. In train controller, that is this schedule and how to create this schedule was the subject of the previous video, so please have a look over there. 
we have three starting points and four end points. And if we would start a train here, it will drive to Bletchley. And then, yeah, how do we return it to Wellingboro? Well, let's do that same trick. Go to the properties and over here, well, let me put it over here. Uh, here we have a, a option for a shuttle. Uh, a shuttle means that we drive uh, yeah, to a dead end and then we drive back to the previous dead end. And again, here we have the number of repeats. We can put that on zero and then this will work fine. We can also do the same as we did in the previous uh, video. Uh, let's do a successor, but first put this back on a normal again, make a successor. And the successor is in this case the exact same schedule, uh, but now uh, vice versa, return journey. I clicked it over here, see, and now it means that this schedule will drive backwards from Bletchley to Wellingboro. And of course I have to keep the same train. Uh, I don't need to request it in the last block, the, pre the second last block. Uh, so this will take care of that. Um, well, now the situation is different. Uh, the next situation is we don't want one shuttle and uh, we also don't want trains to drive backwards on the main track. What we want is to drive always forward and still reach all these stations. And the layout is designed in such a way that this can be accomplished. Let's have a look. All right, so we just drove forward from Wellingboro to Bletchley. We do not want to drive backwards on the main track. And therefore, uh, this layout has these sidings over here. So the next schedule could be uh, driving backwards from Bletchley to this siding. And then we can drive forward again from this siding, driving forward, 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 forward to uh, this siding. Uh, that's the third schedule that we need. And then the fourth schedule that we need is to drive backward from uh, this siding to Wellingboro and then we are back home so to speak. How can we do this in train controller? Well we just have to build these four schedules and the first one we already had that was Wellingboro to Bletchley. I also gave it number one. Uh, schedule number two is uh, from Bletchley that's the green start points driving backwards to this Bletchley siding. And then the third schedule should start from Bletchley siding, driving forward all over the track to Wellingboro siding. And then the final stretch is from Wellingboro siding to Wellingboro one, two, three. These are the four schedules and all we need to do is make them uh, there, uh, give them their appropriate successor. So let's have a look uh, at the schedule number one. Who is to be the successor? Well, number two is to be the successor. So let's add that over there. Uh, we have multiple edits switched on, so I can directly switch to schedule number two. For schedule two, we need number three to become the successor. Oh, I forgot to press keep over there. Uh, yeah, and this tick mark can also be put out. Uh, let's go to schedule three. The successor is going to be schedule four. Keep the train and that one. Then uh, schedule four, the successor is going to be schedule one again. And this means that it will repeat indefinitely. Okay, and I remember for schedule one, I forgot to place the tick mark with keep the same train. This should do it. Uh, let's have a look. I've placed a cargo uh, locomotive here on Wellingboro 3. Let me start this first schedule of the sequence. Uh, start, yeah, it has put it in the uh, schedule list. So we can now have a look over there and see what's happening. Well, the train has started to uh, reserve its uh, path. 
and now we just have to wait until it starts driving let me put it in this uh, uh, throttle over here the name of the train is the 42 there it is yeah it's driving 40 already so we just have to wait the simulator is running and we wait until it is in the next block uh, I don't know why that takes so long, maybe because we are only driving 40 and also in demo mode the speeds are somewhat taken into consideration. Yeah, we have reached the next block, green signal, green signal and it is going to end up in Bletchley in track 3. That's great. We gave it a um, 5 second waiting time. Uh, so well let's just wait for those five seconds and then see if it really picks up the successor schedule which was uh, here from Bletchley to Bletchley siding so that is what we are going to wait for and if that works well then we trust that the rest of that sequence also will work so let's uh, let's have a short wait until the train finally has arrived in Bletchley uh, I could have given it a, a higher maximum speed maybe to uh, not have this waiting time. Uh, yeah, there it is. It should start to break any moment now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there it is. The breaking down ramp. It is now having its waiting time. We can see that here by that uh, little uh, sand clock over there. And then, um, yeah, it is now going to on the move. And the schedule that it is on now is schedule number two, Bletchley uh, one, two, three, four, two, Bletchley seven. So this is working fine. It is picking up this successor. And well, this is only a short track. So let's wait until it also picks up successor number three. And uh, that should not take too long. It is only one block. Uh, yeah, but it is only going 40, so it is also, also a bit slow. Uh, yeah, there it is. It is in that block now. It will ramp down its speed. Uh, we can see by this orange uh, marker here on the throttle that it is driving backwards. We can also see that by this arrow. And now it is driving forward again. It is marker is green. And we see that it has picked up schedule number three. We can see that here in the list two, Bletchley seven, two, Wellingboro six. So it will make the complete round, but it will be driving forward on the main track. This is it. Uh, this is how we can create successors and yeah, make a whole lot of uh, possible uh, uh, train traffic. Um, one of the things that can be done is to create multiple successors and have train controller decide. Let's do an example of that in a future video. In the meantime, always have fun.